This is GU Oncology Now. My name is Katie Beckerman. I'm an assistant professor Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee, and we're gathered here today um, for ASCO 2024. Excited to talk to you all about the updates in kidney cancer that we're seeing this year and just some of the exciting research and uh, clinical advancements um, with, with this wonderful group. So I'll start off, uh, David, and have you introduce yourself and we'll go along the line. So my name is David McDermott. I'm Chief of Medical Oncology at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, and I'm glad to be here. I'm Benjamin Mon, Assistant uh, Professor of GU Oncology at the Huntsman Cancer Center in Salt Lake City. Great to be with all of you. I'm Pavlos Misawal. I'm Assistant Professor at uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm Yusuf Zakaria, a GU Medical Oncologist at the University of Iowa, Director of Phase One Program at the Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center. I'm glad to be here. Well, I know there's going to be a lot of a lot of interesting things that we each maybe have picked out of this meeting. Um, some of the clinical updates I think that we're getting are are some final analysis um, from the Javelin trial. And I don't know if you all have any thoughts on on this study. Essentially, the final OS is is being read out um, this year, which is uh, exciting to see this you know final time point come out. Um, just as a reminder, the this is a IOTKI using abelumab and exitinib. Um, we've been waiting some time now for this to, to finally read out the primary endpoints, um, ORR 51%, uh, PFS about 14 months, and then the final OS had a hazard ratio that reported out at 0.88 with I think a median OS of about 47 months for the combination arm and 39 or so months in the sunetinib arm. So this is a bit the trial that's kind of reading out this year. Is this practice changing for any of you? And um, any any thoughts about how this changes your thoughts on IOTKI regimens? And yeah, so uh, basically, uh, this clinical trial, as you mentioned, combining uh, Avelumab plus uh, Exitinib, uh, was one of the first uh, clinical trials of IOTKI uh, to report, actually, initially. But uh, I felt uh, with all the other uh, combination with different uh, PD-1 and uh, uh, TKI inhibit, uh, PD-1 inhibitors and TKI, uh, this trial uh, felt of uh, uh, the less favorable regimen, if you will, and I think a majority of us uh, were concerned about the lack of uh, overall survival signal uh, with this combination. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm glad to see the data matured uh, now, and this is maybe the longest uh, follow-up data we have an, on IOTKI regimen. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, it seems like the overall survival signal is still lacking uh, there. So I do not think uh, this trial necessarily or this update necessarily is changing my practice currently. And anybody, does this, you know, inform us anymore in metastatic RCC? We've had several trials and I know lots of uh, ongoing discussions about the use of a PD-1 versus a PDL one agent. Do you think that this additionally calls into question that for some reason a PDL one is, you know, not as active in the metastatic or perhaps in earlier settings for kidney cancer? Yeah, it certainly does raise that possibility and it's a very provocative question to ask especially because we have these two prospective phase three trials that we're running almost in parallel in time um, you know both using the same tki and really the difference fundamentally uh, is is the pd1 versus pdl1 if you compare uh, this trial versus the axitinib and, and pembrolizumab and the sort of big fundamental difference between these two in terms of results is one now with the final OS readout is really not significantly different between the experimental arm, the TKI plus PDL1 inhibitor in this case and sunitinib, whereas in the other trial we do see an overall survival signal. Um, so it certainly is provocative in raising that question. Um, I don't know that it definitely answers it in my mind, but certainly I would say that this readout is practice informing or reaffirming because as Youssef was pointing out, this already was the least favored. And I think it sort of cements that uh, in, in my mind. The other, I think, really important part about the long-term follow-up of this is really trying to address this question, do TKIs, at least the TKIs we currently have, result in a synergistic immunological effect uh, with PD-1s or PD-L1s. Um, that certainly is the purported rationale, one of the purported rationales for 
making these combinations together. And I would argue that so far we haven't really seen that bear out in a clinical way um, like we have seen it in laboratory models. Yeah, that's great. Um, and I guess, you know, maybe thinking about that, that's a really great segue to think, you know, when we are trying to um, take a rationale for IOTKI combination and build upon this in the future or build upon an IOIO IO backbone, um, you know, how do you all think about um, getting the, the best advantage, the best survival for your patients? And how do you kind of think about frontline treatment as it stands, you know, maybe over the last year with several updates in the IOTKI long-term follow-up? Um, and the Checkmate 214 data that's uh, read out at GU ASCO this year, eight-year survival. You're looking at me? Sure. I'll start with you. <laughs> yes, I, I think it's hard to build on PD-1 TKI backbones um, for a variety of reasons. One, you know, Ben sort of mentioned it, there, there was preclinical evidence that they would be enhancing the immune response of the tumor, but we haven't seen a lot of that evidence in the clinic. The only exception to that is I think the CR rate is higher with when you combine those two approaches than with either alone. So maybe there's something there, but the way the trials were set up to continue the TKI indefinitely for responders makes it hard to say that these immune responses are ongoing off drug. And that's really what we want to see. I think the second thing, and Ben sort of alluded to this, is the toxicity issue. It's, we saw this sort of in cosmic 313, it's hard to build a, put a third drug in once, you know, PD-1 and, and TKI are there because you, you bat, run into toxicity that is either dose limiting or dose reducing. And that's obviously, you know, runs the risk of lowering the chances of a durable long-term effect, which is certainly what we saw in Cosmic. <laughs>